When unpolarized light passes through a polarizer, its intensity is cut by exactly a half. Why is that? Let's find out together. What does it mean to say that an electromagnetic wave carries energy? Remember, an electromagnetic wave is an oscillating electric field. If you need a refresher, just check this video. You can find a link in the description, or you can alternatively click on the relevant card at the end of this video. OK, so let's draw an oscillating electric field. It's basically a wave. And on the y-axis will be the electric field strength. The amplitude of this wave is actually the maximum value that can have the magnitude of the electric field strength, so E max. If this oscillating electric field, this electromagnetic wave, passes through a medium that contains charges, these charges will be subjected to an oscillating electric field, therefore will be subjected to an oscillating force. they will gain acceleration, therefore kinetic energy, right? So they will gain energy, so something worked on them, and the thing that worked on them was the electromagnetic wave. Energy is defined by the capacity to do work. Therefore, if the electromagnetic wave was able to do work, it has energy. This is a conceptual view that explains what it means to have an electromagnetic wave carrying energy. How do we quantify this energy? Well, for that, we use the concept of intensity. Intensity is the energy that is received for every second per unit area. So you see the unit will be joules per second per meter square. In other words, watts per meter square. When it comes to light, we perceive this intensity as brightness. If you have a surface illuminated by a lamp, for example, and the surface is very bright, it means that the intensity of the light is large. If you want to quantify the energy carried by a wave, you can consider, therefore, the intensity, and it is proportional to the square of the amplitude of the wave. So for an electromagnetic wave, the intensity will be proportional to the square of the maximum value of the electric field strength. For those that are curious, for an electromagnetic wave, K is equal to the speed of light multiplied by the permittivity of vacuum divided by 2. But for our video, we don't really care about this. We'll just consider the proportionality. The objective of this video is to figure out how much of the intensity of unpolarized light makes it through a polarizer. But before we could dig into this question, we need to understand what unpolarized light is. Imagine a surface and I illuminate this surface with a beam of light. This beam of light is composed of many rays of light, each ray being an electromagnetic wave, that is, an oscillating electric field, and the oscillation occurs in a plane. So basically, each of these rays is polarized light. So you could imagine, for example, this one, oscillating in the plane of the board. This one could be oscillating in an angle compared to the plane of the board. So I draw the plane first. It's not easy to draw. This one could be oscillating in a different angle compared to the plane of the board. So in the end, you realize that unpolarized light is just a construct of polarized rays. No, no, I know Van Gogh nor Picasso. And you can see that. <laughs> this was quite challenging for me to draw. I prefer more practical ways to draw unpolarized light. I'll consider an axis coming out of the board. And this axis represents the propagation of the, the beam, the direction of the beam of unpolarized light. For the individual polarized rays, I represent them via the plane of polarization. For example, this one 
represents a sine curve that comes out of the board in the horizontal plane. This one, a sine curve coming out of the board in the vertical plane. And others, which are coming out of the board in a plane which is making an angle with the horizontal plane or the vertical plane, you can draw another one. And I like this representation because it reminds me that unpolarized light is actually a construct of polarized rays. Now that we know that unpolarized light is just a construct of polarized EM waves, we can look at what happens to one polarized EM wave when it passes through a polarizer and extend this idea to the full unpolarized beam. Let's look at what happens when you have a polarized wave that passes through a polarizer. I'm considering here a polarizer with an axis of polarization which is vertical. Now I'm considering an incident wave oscillating in a plane which makes an angle theta with the vertical. So when it arrives on the polarizer, only the component which is parallel to the axis of polarization will pass through. Basically this. So what comes out will be also a polarized wave, but the intensity of it will be smaller. If we label the intensity of the incident wave I0, then the output wave will have an intensity I equals to I0 cos squared of theta. This is called Malus law. If you are curious, you can check out how I derived this law in this video. If we replace the incident polarized light by unpolarized light and still want to calculate the intensity coming out of the polarizer, we could just repeat this operation for all possible angles of polarization and take the average. To do so, we can consider Malus law like a function and then take the average of that function over an interval of angles which correspond to all the possible angles of polarization. That interval would be between 0 and pi. Let's do that. I integrate the function over 0 to pi and then I take the average. This is, by the way, in math, how you average a function over an interval. Once we solve this integral, we'll find the intensity that comes out of a polarizer when the incident beam is unpolarized light. I0 is a constant, so I can Take it out of the integral. I have to integrate cos squared theta. Yeah, I don't like that. Instead, I'm going to use a trigonometric identity to simplify the integration. I remember that cos of 2 theta equals 2 cos squared theta minus 1. Yeah, I think it's correct. So if I rearrange to find cos squared theta, I'll just rearrange it directly into the integral. I0 over pi, 0 pi. So that gives me cos 2 theta plus 1 divided by 2. Cos 2 theta plus 1 divided by 2. The 2 is a constant, I can remove it. So I end up with cos 2 theta plus 1. So I rewrite it down. I0 over 2 pi, integration between 0 and pi of cos 2 theta plus 1. The primitive of cos 2 theta is 2 sine 2 theta, and for 1 it's just theta. So I can write this 2 sine 2 theta plus theta between 0 and pi. And now I just need to develop this. So 2 sine of 2 pi, well that's 0, plus pi, minus 2 sine of 0, that's still 0, minus 0. So it's just pi. So that gives me i0 pi divided by 2 pi, i equals i0 
Over two. So conclusion, when unpolarized light comes into a polarizer, the intensity that comes out is half of the intensity that came in. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. It really encourages me to make new videos. In the meantime, I wish you the best and I'll see you soon for the next episode of Physics Made Easy. Ciao.